This is the Practical Homeopathy Podcast, episode number 91. Joe at Calabrese here, folks. I'm happy that you've joined me for my podcast today. You're in for a treat. From my virtual classroom, I'm privileged to see how homeopathy is transforming lives all over the globe. Their successes inspire me. They're glorious and powerful, and I can't keep their triumphs a secret. I want you to hear the excitement my students experience too, so you can be inspired by the unique stories. So with the help from Kate, my reporter, I bring you a podcast series I call Moms with Moxie. Sometimes we even interview dads with audacity or teens with tenacity. See how regular mothers and others, average folks who love healing those around them have gone from freaking to fabulous by simply applying what they've learned using what I call practical homeopathy. Hi, and welcome to another Mom with Moxie podcast. I'm excited for you all to get to meet our guest today. Her name is Janie, and she has been using homeopathy for a very long time. So I'm really looking forward to learning from her today. Welcome to the podcast, Janie. Thank you very much, Kate. I would love to start off by learning a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm married, and I live in England. And I have three grown-up children who don't live at home anymore and two lovely little grandchildren. Aww. So you have been using homeopathy for a long period of time. Tell us how you got started learning about homeopathy and then the history from there and using homeopathy. Okay. I think I've probably been using homeopathy almost as long as Joette. And I started when I was pregnant with my first baby. I got itchiness on my belly one day and it spread to all of my body really rapidly. And I tried everything natural that I could think of or knew of or could hear about that was possible to help. And the only things that worked were about three or four cool showers a night and then slathering myself with almond oil and wearing a cotton nightie that was up to my neck, down to my wrists and down to my feet so I wouldn't touch the bedclothes. That sounds um, miserable. When I got back into bed, it was really awful. And uh, I was at a health food store one day, and the man there said, why don't you look at some of our books? There's some books on homeopathy, and I think that might be able to help you. And it's safe to take when you're pregnant. So I looked through and found an anti-itching remedy in one of them, and I bought the book. And um, I took that remedy every two or three hours during the course of the rest of the pregnancy, which was about another six weeks or so. And it really helped. It was the only way I could survive it. And it happened again in my next pregnancy, but for longer. And I was so pleased because I knew what to do. I knew what I could actually help myself with in terms of coping. And that was 23 weeks that I had the itching that pregnancy. So. I hadn't figured out which remedy might help to uproot it, obviously. So I learned a bit about homeopathy in between those two babies because I found a local homeopath who was teaching a class on first aid with homeopathy. And I had about eight or 12 weeks of night school. And that was really, really useful. And that, along with the book I had bought, helped me to look after my family when they were little and do all sorts of things to um, sort them out with bumps and goose eggs and broken bones and um, a bee sting that was in the hand of one of my friend's babies and the arm swelled up and <laughs> went all the way up the arm and a fairly severe swelling reaction to a vaccination. So there were all sorts of things that I was able to treat when I was a mum with first aid, but I didn't know how much I didn't know. <laughs> And I've learned how much I didn't know since I came across Joette's courses in her blog. And it's wonderful. I'm just so excited about what I've been learning in the last two years. And then you sort of fell away from using homeopathy. I did actually, because I only thought of it as a first aid thing. I didn't think that it could be used for anything else or anything that was serious. So there were serious tonsillitis and measles and 
even things that I should have thought of looking in my first aid book and seeing if I could use homeopathy, it somehow kind of left my sight, if you want to say that. And it was really only when I had come across Joette in the Western Price Journal, because I had Sally Fallon's books and loved her cooking and stuff like that. And I came across Joette around the same time that my knees were really, really, really bothering me. And I still am not somebody who wants to take medications. So I actually got in touch with her because I couldn't sleep at night very well at all. I was waking up every single time I turned over because my knees hurt so much. So then you reached out to Joette and you consulted with her. Yes, I did. I had been reading on her blog for maybe about four or five months by then. And so I'd learned quite a lot. I'd tried a few little things that she had mentioned on her website in the blog posts and the recordings and I learned a lot from you. Thank you very much, by the way. (laughs) Oh, it's just those moms that I interview and Joette, they do a fantastic job of sharing with us their success stories. I learned so much. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, I got in touch with Joette and I got rid of the pain in my knees in about four weeks. And that was fantastic. Um, The constant pain. I still had it occasionally. And especially if I walked downhill. Uh, But that had been a long-standing problem that it never even occurred to me to ask her about because I didn't think it could be fixed. It had been so long-standing. And about probably eight months later, I went for a walk with my sister down a canyon and um, I was able to walk down there and only have Arnica once for the pain. And then another three or four months later after that, I was able to walk uh, halfway up a mountain and back down again without pain. Oh my goodness. That was amazing. Yeah, you said you'd had that pain for 40 years. Yes. Yeah, maybe longer. Wow. Since I was a young teenager. I just had someone email me um, who's going to be very encouraged by hearing this because I've had several long standing problems, they said. And is it possible that homeopathy could help me? And I encourage them to try the homeopathy for those conditions because I think, yes, in fact, it can help. And not every condition is going to be totally healed, maybe necessarily, but there is the possibility that those conditions can go away, even if they're longstanding. Yeah. And I think one of the things I've been learning in the last year or so from the podcasts and from Joette's blog and from the consultations too, is that Things that you don't even think about can be something that can be sorted with some other remedy that you're taking for another purpose, Mm -hmm. because remedies have way more than one particular purpose. Mm -hmm. And that is just so intriguing and so interesting. It's just wonderful. And I have another story about a remedy like that, where I got an unexpected benefit too. Do you want to hear it? Yes, I would love to hear it. (laughs) Tell us. Well, I had come across just in flicking through Joette's website, a blog post about cataracts, where her cousin had started taking the protocol for cataracts. And so I decided to do the same, mostly because my dog had cataracts. And I had been told I had early cataracts, but it was normal for someone of my age and not to worry about them. And so I decided to take the remedy with him because... I was giving it to my dog twice a day, so I might as well just do it at the same time to me. So that was great. And I actually did have my optician tell me four or five months later that he thought that my left eye had improved a bit, which was great. And I hadn't told him that I was taking anything. (laughs) I still haven't because I want to see if I keep taking it, whether it'll improve in the right eye. (laughs) And um, certainly in my dog, I don't think he has eyes that are quite so cloudy anymore, which is great. But the story about unexpected benefits is that my dog actually has always been a really super sensitive person. Well, you know, you think about your pets as a (laughs) a super sensitive soul. And he lost his puppy-like trust that he had when he was a little wee uh, baby pup and his affectionate nature, and was much more distant 
And he was also kind of slow and a bit sluggish and he loves to sleep a lot. He still loves to sleep a lot, but he <laughs> actually ended up with the calc carb giving him some oomph and he became a lot more affectionate in his nature, which to us is a complete joy and delight, of course. And you were giving him the calc carb for what? Part of the remedy protocol for the cataracts was calc carb. And Joette told me in one of our conversations that actually the calc carb was the thing that was probably helping him to become more affectionate and more confident. Wow, that's great. I love it when you take a remedy for one thing and it helps other conditions. It is fabulous. Yeah, I agree totally. Yeah, so exciting. And I just looked up the name of the blog for those of you who are wondering where to find that protocol. And it's called Cataracts Halted, Even Improved with Homeopathy. And you'll find that on Joette's website under her blogs. The blogs are a fantastic resource. You can learn so much from flicking through the website and having a look at what Joette's written over the years. It's so much fun to learn. Mm -hmm. um, one of my goals is to go through all of the blogs and write down all of the protocols that she mentions in those blogs. And I know there's actually remedy cards that you can print off as well for each blog where she mentions remedies or protocols. Yeah. Yeah. I save those remedy cards. And when I have something that is going on, if I have my computer in front of me, I just search on whatever that condition is or mm. what a friend's asked me about. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I can find those remedy cards really easily, which helps. And I believe that you have another story about your dog. Um, our lovely Labrador has always been subject to getting wet eczema under his chin. And we didn't realize at first, but we think now that it's probably due to various tick bites because we have a lot of ticks in the woodlands near mm -hmm. where we live and where we walk him. And so he gets bitten frequently and we find these ticks and have to take them off. And he got really, really sick about a year ago and his whole chest lost its hair and was weeping. And he was a very sad situation. Actually, the vet was desperate to put him on antibiotics. But I went to her for a diagnosis to find out <laughs> what was going on. And she looked at my face and she said, you don't want him to have antibiotics, do you? And I said, well, I'd really like to try homeopathy. And she said, okay, this is Wednesday. If he's not better by Friday, better enough, then you have to promise you're going to put him on the antibiotics. <laughs> and so I did promise. And by Friday, he was so much better that we were able to keep going with the homeopathic support. Is she a fan of homeopathy now? I think she's heard about it before. So she was willing to give it a try. And she's also quite open-minded to her clients using raw food diets for their pets and really helping them in other ways than just pharmaceutical medications, which is great. Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad that he got better. Ticks can be a real issue for pets. Yeah. And now we know what to do. So we fix them before it gets bad. Yeah. So have you taken some of Joette's courses as well as consulting? Yes, I have. I've taken the detox course and the mindful homeopathy course and the good gut, bad gut course. And of course, both of the gateway courses. Mm -hmm. Good. And I've learned a ton. Yes, I love the courses. They're packed full of protocols. And so people always ask, how do I learn these protocols? And the only way that I know, other than the Banerjee book, is Joette's courses. And I actually think her courses have more protocols in them than the Banerjee book. Yeah. And I think that when you read Joette's stories, I always find that stories are sticky mm. and I remember them. And so I understand why there might be a certain protocol or I remember a story about how it worked and that makes it stick in my head a little bit more. Right. And that's the same for me too with the gateway groups. When I'm studying with a group of people and I hear over and over again about how different people have used the remedies, it helps lock it in in my brain. Absolutely. And it's really neat if somebody tells you that something's helped because mm -hmm. that's their personal story. And it can be quite stunning, actually. I have a friend who has PTSD, post traumatic stress mm -hmm. disorder, and it is amazing when this person takes Ignatia, he says it's like a little miracle mm. in a bottle. 
<laughs> and, uh, and it helps him survive. You know, it's great. I like Ignatia because it stops the feeling of being overwhelmed. And I've had that myself as well. And it really works. So are there other things that you've used Ignatia for? Yes, amongst various friends. Definitely things like insomnia because they were too overwhelmed with stuff in life. Okay. Yeah. Um, anxiety. It's been a great one for anxiety for several people that I know. Mm. And the PTSD, of course, and grief. When uh, one of my children moved to a different country, I was quite overwhelmed with the feeling of grief. And actually, I took a, an Ignatia, because I've read one of Joette's blogs recently. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I took one, and I could just feel this grief sort of draining out of me, that sense of being completely incapacitated by it. It didn't take the grief away, but it just made it not impossible to deal with. Yes. And that was really, really helpful. Mm -hmm. There are so many stories that you have of using homeopathy, of course, because you've been using it for a long time. What would you like to share with us next? Um, well, I'd like to tell you about my daughter when she had her baby. Yes. I happened to be at her house and I happened to be talking to Joette. And she reminded me, oh, have a look at the baby grand information for what to possibly use during labor. And so I did, and I wrote down some ideas, and I ended up totally by accident. It wasn't designed. I ended up being with my daughter when she was in the hospital in labor. And I gave her Arnica once an hour for the pain, and she didn't need any pain medication other than just once. And she went through her labor really quite well. And in the baby grand thing, there's another remedy that helps get labor moving if it stalls. And so she had that once. And she also had it when she had a delayed delivery of the placenta. And it worked mm. both times just to get the, the uterus moving and doing its job. And, uh, and that was great. And she recovered really well. I think that's colophyllum. Is that correct? It is. Yes. 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 Joette has talked about that on another podcast, at least one other podcast. So yes. Yeah. Great. And did you use that in a 30C potency? I used the colophyllum in a 30C okay. and the Arnica was 200C. Okay. And great. they were my favorite ones for during her labor. Okay. Just because it was nice and straightforward, but I think maybe it was nice and straightforward because she had her pain under control and was able to concentrate on the job at hand. Mm, yes. And it's so exhausting when you're in such pain, right? And so if you can control that pain, you can give the mom more energy to do the things that she needs to do. So. Yeah. Yeah. And the baby grand CD that you referred to earlier, that is on Joette's website and it's available as part of a combo pack of her top seven products. Um, so you'll find that under shop and then books and CDs, the combo pack right there. I so wish that I'd known about homeopathy when I was in labor. <laughs> oh, well, we just, have to, we just have to move forward. Yes. Now, this is great because like on the podcast, you can share these stories and help so many other moms. So that's really exciting. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have some other stories as well about things that have been helped with homeopathy over the years. A friend had a very severe dog bite on her hand. Um, the doctor, when he saw it, it was so swollen, he couldn't really tell, but he thought it had gone down to the bone. And so we looked up Joette's blog for animal bites and followed that. And although she was on antibiotics already, she thinks that the healing happened faster because of the homeopathic support too. And that blog is called He Bit Me Homeopathy Cures Animal Bites. And so if you're new to Joette's website, she has a search bar at the top right hand corner and you can just type in whatever you're looking for, whether it's animal bites or if you want to look up a remedy and see what she's written about a specific remedy, you can type that in there and it'll bring up all of her articles, blogs, podcasts, anywhere that that particular condition or remedy is mentioned. And that's one of the first places that I go when I need information on something. I mean, really, I just open Joette's website and I type in like, I don't know, sore throat. And then I read all of the things about sore throat. So that's that what a, I do too. Yeah, good. Yeah. 
it's really practical. It is. Yes. Easier than looking things up in a book, honestly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And interestingly, that dog bite story, I had a spider bite and somebody else had a spider bite a couple of weeks later. And I used that protocol for the spider bite because it looked the same as my friend's hand. And that worked too, which was great. So in that blog, I know it mentions the Hypericum 200 and Arsenicum Album 200. Is that what you used for your spider bite? Yes, that's what I used. Because it was looking infected-ish? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Infected, swollen, um, mm -hmm. really tight. It was so swollen. And I also used the Leadum because that's for puncture wounds. And I figured right. that if the dog had bitten my friend's hand and it had punctured it, and that helped. Then a spider had also bitten me, mm -hmm. <laughs> punctured me. Yes. And, uh, and that helped too. <laughs> well, that's great. Spider bites, I think everyone gets those. And, and every once in a while, you get one that just really is irritating or starts to swell up. And so that's very helpful. Thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. I also had two friends that got plantar fasciitis within about a year of each other. And um, the first one, he thinks that he just got better, which is perfectly fine. I don't mind if he thinks that. <laughs> <laughs> Had nothing to do with the homeopathy. <laughs> Within about four days of starting the homeopathy after eight months of pain. <laughs> but that's all right. And, um, and then the next one also got better within about eight days. And I think he thinks it just was coincidence. <laughs> but I don't mind. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's funny. And food intolerances, a crick in the neck, constipation, diarrhea, all sorts of things. It's really amazing. And even cat flu with our cat many years ago. Cat flu? What is cat flu? I think it's called feline influenza or something like that. Usually cats die from it. <gasps> and so I looked it up in my animal homeopathy book because I bought one about cats when we had cats and I bought one about dogs when we got dogs and that was really useful and I just gave the remedies for the situations that arose animals always have situations every <laughs> once in a while yes they do <laughs> and uh, and it helped her and she actually had that twice and was really, really ill. But luckily, she wasn't a cat that slunk away to be ill by herself. She actually stayed in the house. So I noticed she was ill. Mm. And then I could help her because I could see what was going on. We've also sorted out all sorts of cases of flu mm. <laughs> for people. And people have different remedies um, yes. that work for them. And that's quite interesting, too. So if I'm showing a friend something about homeopathy for the first time, say they can't go to sleep at night or something like that, or they wake up in the middle of the night, then I'll show them two or three of Joette's stories mm -hmm. on her blog and let them pick what they think matches best for their own symptoms. And that is really practical and very friendly and low key. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great idea. I do the same thing. I say to go to Joette's search bar and type in whatever condition they have, just like we were talking about earlier. And it's been exciting to see other people catch the homeopathy vision and, and get excited about it as well. Yes, I totally agree. And I know that I probably sounded like Joette's my idol during this um, <laughs> podcast, but I have learned so much from her and I am so grateful. And I'm so excited about what I'm learning. I've just bought two more courses. <laughs> oh, yay. Which ones? Survivalist and Feminopathy. So I do intend to take them all over the course of time. Something that's interesting that people don't realize is that the survivalist guide to homeopathy comes in a big binder. So you get a huge binder filled with information on the history of homeopathy, remedies for pretty much every emergency situation that you can think of, um, a materia medica, all about the cell salts, and so much more. In fact, I have my binder right here. I, I use it all the time. So that's exciting. You're going to love it. Thank you. Yeah, I'm really excited about that one too. Yeah. And feminopathy for all my friends. I know you mentioned that you sound like you're promoting Joette, but Joette doesn't want to necessarily promote 
her materials, she wants to share stories about people who have been helped with homeopathy and encourage people. And so that is why we do these podcasts to say, yes, it is possible. Here's what these people have used. Here's how they found the information. And it is possible to heal yourself with homeopathy. And so be encouraged, everyone that's listening, because this is amazing medicine and you can do it too. You know, Janie has been doing this for a long time, but like she says, she's used it on and off for many years. But all the success stories that you've had are just amazing. And I think about what would I have done without homeopathy in my life and all the medicines that my children would have taken over the years. I'm so grateful as well for homeopathy and for the things that Joette teaches. We're in the same boat then, Kate. (laughs) This is an approach to homeopathy that I didn't come across before. I mentioned how this approach to homeopathy, protocols, you don't have to spend hours and hours and hours researching and trying to figure out the one single remedy that will fit everything like you do in classical homeopathy. And so it makes it possible for somebody who is busy living their normal life to actually use homeopathy in a much more practical way. So I'm just delighted that I've come across Joette's approach and the Banerjee's approach and the protocol idea of using homeopathy. It is really practical. So just to wrap up, if we're at that point, Kate, um, My conclusion here that I want to share is really that homeopathy is fabulous. Practical homeopathy with protocols is fabulous. And there's so much to learn and so much you can do. It's really changed my approach to listening to my friends talk about what's going on in their lives in terms of pains and aches and all sorts of things. And I'm delighted to be able to share it. As I hope you know by now, On my blog, podcasts, and Facebook Live, I offer as many protocols for simple conditions as I can, for free, without affiliates or advertising. But let me be clear, when it comes to more complex conditions, it's key that you learn how to use these medicines properly. I want you to be well-trained. So I save discussions of the more involved methods for my courses in which I walk students through each method with step-by-step training. In these podcasts, I focus on those students of mine who have already tunneled in and learned how to take care of themselves, family, friends, and pets, and even livestock using homeopathic medicine. Many of these students began their education by participating in one of my Gateway to Homeopathy study groups. And now, after taking one or more of my courses, they're well-trained to use my specific brand of homeopathy. I hope listening to this podcast has inspired you to follow in their footsteps. With the proper training, you too can nurture and protect the health of your family and loved ones with practical homeopathy. You just listened to a podcast from practicalhomeopathy.com where nationally certified homeopath, public speaker, and author Joette Calabrese shares her passion for helping families stay strong through homeopathy. Joette's podcasts are available on iTunes, Google Play, Blueberry, Pandora, Stitcher, TuneIn, and iHeartRadio. Thank you for listening to this podcast with Joette Calabrese. To learn more and find out if homeopathy is a good fit for your health strategy, visit practicalhomeopathy.com. Homeopathy.com